86 this time and the car came to us for a timing belt replacement. We're also going to do the full service, but uh, this video will be mostly about the timing replacement. So uh, again, we have genuine parts from TPS, uh, we have a water pump that needs replacing, and uh, we have uh, all the timing things like uh, the idle pulley, tensioner pulley, all the accessories with the nuts and bolts, and uh, the new timing belt of course. So uh, this video will go step by step and uh, we will start from the top of the vehicle, removing the filter and the engine mount, and then we're going to go from underneath to take all the covers off and uh, we get to the timing belt, so let's do it. So we're going to start with these two sensors. This one has a security pin. You always got to take it out and push it. Okay, then we need a screwdriver. Okay, and now down here we have these two clips. There's one and there's two. And you can remove the, the filter box just like this. So this is our air filter that will be replaced anyways. So that goes in the bin. Box in. Then you have the air fit coming through there, that's got to be taken off and first you got to pull the filter towards the front because there's a rubber pin which is mounted onto the chassis so you got to pull it towards the front and then just take it out and uh, these are your quick fit pins which are holding the top of the box so that's off. Okay, so we lift the car up now, and uh, this is, I think, a typical problem when the crankshaft seal is leaking. So you see all the oil on the on the tray cover. So uh, just in case, I ordered the housing, which is on the table. So I think probably we will have to replace it. Okay, let's take the cover off. Okay, next up, wheel off, we gotta take out the inner arch so we can get to the crank pulley from this side and uh, we have to drop the drive belt and One more 8 mil from underneath First invention by Volkswagen. Oil leak from the crank seal. So yeah, luckily we got the material that will be replaced. Okay, so we removed the under tray cover uh, and. Uh, and the wheel cover. Right now we have to take off uh, the ground cable which is uh, 13 mil and uh, then we have to take off the bracket with the engine mount and uh, finally we can get onto the timing over here. Hmm? 
So the big one is 18 mil. T10s, additional water pump, electric one. So now we're removing these three 16 mils and uh, we finally gonna get to the timing belt. Okay, so you have uh, these secure plastic thingies, just pull them towards the side and slide it up. And there's our timing belt. This is our tensioner pulley and uh, this is our arrow which got to be in between the gap which is. So that's telling us the belt is not stretched too much. Um, also on the bottom of the plastic, right over there, there's a, there's a mark for the timing. So that gotta be in place and we also have to put a pin into the cam into the high pressure fuel pump which is on the side over there and uh, then we can drop the old belt off and start replacing all the pulleys. Okay so we moved the engine now and this is one reason why the engine didn't fall down because it's supposed to from the bottom. Also there are two additional engine mounts, one is in the front, one is in the back. So this gives us just a bit of a movement to adjust the engine up and down so we can get to the things where we need to get to. So before we're gonna take off the drive belt, uh, we wanna release these four bolts for the crank pulley. And uh, once they release, we're gonna drop the drive belt. There's a tensioner pulley right over there. You need the 16 mil spanner for that. And uh, then we're gonna thin the engine so we have the timing marks in place everywhere where it needs to be. Okay, so we turn the engine and the camshaft is in position now, so there will go our, uh, our rotation pin and also the crankshaft is in place as you can see, so there's a cut on the crank pulley that got to be timed up with the plastic, sort of we are there, we will still have to use the timing tools for this engine what we have and uh, we still have to remove uh, the crank pulley uh, along with the tooth pulley which is on there because we got to replace the crank seal so let's take the crank pulley off with the plastic and uh, then we're going to start stripping the timing down so we are using plastic hammer instead of metal one because we don't want to damage uh, the crank pulley we're going to tap it here and there so it will get a bit loose not coming off still bastard there we go so that's our crank pulley and we finally get to the timing so uh, we gotta take this plastic cover off and we will see the entire timing of the engine So you gotta lift it up to unclick it and pull it out. 
So yeah, that's the last cover. And that's our other timing belt. And this is where the leak coming from. From underneath here and probably from inside as well with this oil inside. So all the housing needs to be replaced. We gotta take the bolt out, which is tight. I think uh, two million Newton meters and 90 degrees. So that will be fun to take off. Uh, we need a special tool to hold the crank in position and we have to remove it, take this pulley out and we have to replace the whole housing. So that will be the next step. It's just this part is like twisted. So that's why it's leaking probably. Okay, so uh, we're gonna put the pin into the camshaft now like that so that's holding in place okay so we're losing the 18 mil and the t30 next step uh, is a 15 mil nut for the tensioner pulley and also we have to put a rotating pin for the high pressure fuel pump which is right over here so as you can see this is not lining up 100 percent but it's not that bad anyway There you go. Okay, so now the belt is loose and you can see how the pulley is moving. So this is how it's designed. It's got to move freely. Whoever is putting the marks um, is not a correct timing, sort of, because it might be a different length now and the timing might be out for, I don't know, one degree or even half degree. And these engines are quite sensitive on the coloration between the cam and the crank. So best thing is use these timing tools. I still have to put a timing tool on the bottom of the crank, but uh, we, have, we have to remove it first, put the new housing, and then we will time the engine up and put new bits on. So this is how the timing belt looks like on a 17 play transporter after 40,000 miles and um, literally four years. So it's time to replace it time wise. It doesn't have any sign that it should go, but it's just prevention to change it before something goes wrong. Okay, so this is our tensioner pulley, the old one. Again, can't tell if it's something wrong with it, but everything will be replaced. Okay, so we put the special tool on, a big bar, and uh, we're gonna try to release this bolt, which is tight, two million Newton meters, plus 90 degrees. All you need is a special tool. So we have to clean the engine before we put the new housing on. I'm using brake cleaner and a brush to actually take all the dirt off. And once it's all clean, we're gonna remove it and reinstall the new one.
Okay, so let's have a look at the shape. Basically, I think it's not even in the center. You can see this is much more squeeze on the bottom than on the top. So probably it was replaced before something was going on, but that doesn't fit in the middle. So that's our problem. Also from the bottom, the gasket is gone or the silicone wasn't holding properly and towards this side it was pushed up it's like twisted to the top so yeah that's going in the bin we will install a new one Whew. okay so we put a bit of oil new oil on the crankshaft seal and uh, as you can see from the factory there is a rubber gasket on the housing already but from this side where the oil sum goes uh, there should be a silicon so um, we will not put silicon on the plastic bit we have to put silicon on the sump uh, because the way we're going to slide it we will push some silicon with this edge against it so we want to have a ceiling on it so best thing will be put it on the sump as it should be and we already degreased the surface so uh, we're just gonna put new silicon onto the sump. Okay, so um, these bolts for the oil sump, uh, they should be 30 newton meters. So we're gonna tie all of them with the housing and then we're gonna put back on the mine crankshaft bolt. Okay, so we're putting a new bolt onto the uh, crankshaft pulley and the gear and uh, it should be tight uh, 120 newton meters and 90 degrees. So uh, it will need mirror slab assistance again to help us and hold it down. And that's it, all done. Okay, so this is the original timing tool for the crankshaft and it's going right here onto this wheel, slide on. So these two are going into the original holes for the bolts for the crank pulley and uh, I'm just going to show you on the old crank, it sits like this and the pin goes through there and it's holded in here in the housing so it doesn't move. So uh, we've got the crank in the correct position now, uh, we will put the new timing belt, uh, the top one is already irritated as uh, you've seen on the part of the video and we still have to put the pin onto the high pressure fuel pump over there and that's it, we can put new timing belt, tension it, 
and tied everything and uh, put it back together, job done. Okay, so this is the pambo we took out now, and uh, this is the new one. And uh, as you can see from this side, I've got a person feeling it was probably slightly leaking. So um, it was time to definitely to replace it. New water pump is on now. Uh, we have to tie these bolts 10 Newton meters and 90 degrees, and then we'll continue. No problem. Okay, so we replace everything, uh, water pump, uh, that idle pulley, everything is in position as it should be, pinned for the high pressure fuel pump. I didn't put this idle pulley on, uh, because we always struggle to put the belt on in place as it should be. So what I usually do, I put this uh, gear maximum anti-clockwise, we're gonna put the belt, and as soon as it's on place, we're gonna put this idle pulley, so we'll push it back in, and that will turn it slightly in the position where it should be. So next up is belt and uh, and the tensioner pulley. So it's time to put the timing tool for the crankshaft. Okay, so the timing belt is on now. So I put the idle pulley uh, on as soon as the timing belt was between the camshaft and the high pressure pump, just to make it a bit easier for me to put the belt on in the correct position. So uh, very important, this tension the pulley, have uh, this piece, we've got to sit in the cylinder head like this, in this gap, and uh, in the kit you've got 15, and uh, 13 mil mag, the 13 mil always goes on that idler pulley, the 15 because it has a larger surface goes on the tensioner pulley. Uh, so the tensioner pulley is now tensioned, as you can see, it's between, and uh, this is all right as well, this idler pulley, because we still have a bit of a gap on the top and on the bottom, so it's somewhere in the middle. If you will have it too much on, on one or two, one or the other side, uh, you're gonna take the pins off. You might end up uh, with the engine out of timing. So this is how it looks. Once it's sort of done, we still have to tighten everything down to the Newton meter specs. So I gotta find the torque settings, and we're gonna finish it off. This 18 mil bolt. That's 100 Newton meters, the small torx is 9 Newton meters, and these 13s are 20 Newton meters. And once uh, this is uh, tension as it is, uh, that's 20 Newton meters and 90 degrees, and that's it. Then we have to turn the engine a few times and check if all these points are in the same position. I think the high pressure fuel pump will not be in the position after one or two turns. You have to make more turns to put it in the position, so that's irrelevant at the moment. But uh, definitely camshaft and crank gotta be in the correct position, so let's do it. Yeah. 
So we will do two turns here and after we are in the place on the bottom we will put the irritation tool onto the bottom and onto the top and if these two are in the place we know everything's fine. Okay, so engine mount is back on along with the bracket for the electric water pump and everything. So uh, these 16 mil bolts, uh, 16 Newton meters, this 18 mil is 19 Newton meters, and uh, we still have to put the ground, the 13 mil nut. And uh, only thing what's left now is uh, put all the piping back on and the air box along with the new air filter. And uh, we still have to replace oil filter and a few bits and bobs, and then we're gonna try to start the engine up. Можно, да?
engine is finally running and the last thing we need to do is replace the fuel filter. To do that we have to remove this coolant tank a bit on the side otherwise it will not come out. So uh, you have these uh, quick fit pins, just push them in, pull them out and uh, there's a clump with a 10 mil bolt what needs to be released and the whole filter will come out just like this. Once the filter is in place, it's good to use diagnostic or put some fuel into the new fuel filter, otherwise you might end up with the airlock in the fuel system. So just the last quick check what we actually have done. Uh, we put a new sun plug as well, 25 newton meters, new oil filter, 25 newton meters for the housing. No oil leaks, everything's cool, running. Uh, last thing we need to do is clean this awful awful full of oil on the tray so there we go nice and clean we go back on and we still have to tie the alloy wheel back on 120 newton meters for the mine bolts and nevertheless last last thing we gotta plug the diagnostic in and we have to reset all the intervals and check for fault codes is everything's running as it should be So there's another car sorted, um, 6 in the evening, half past 6, uh, it took me all day, but uh, full service is done, uh, along with the timing belt kit with the water pump, we also replaced the housing, I uh, left the silicon for a couple of hours to actually dry up before we put the fresh oil in, and uh, yeah, that's it all for today, and I'll see you in the next video guys, take care, see ya.